Hello, everyone. My name is Tyler Sullivan, and I'm a fourth year medical student at Toro University, California. Today, we are going to be talking about strokes. Specifically, how to identify which artery is involved based on the symptomatology. This is going to be a four part video lecture series. The first lecture will be an anatomical review of the brain's blood supply and the territories that each artery covers. Then anterior circulation strokes will be split between lectures two and three. Lastly, in the fourth video, we will cover posterior circulation strokes. So let's get started. Blood supply and arterial territories. The brain is an insatiable consumer of oxygen. Although it makes up only 2% of an adult's total body weight, it receives 15 to 17% of total cardiac output and consumes 20% of the oxygen used by the entire body. An ongoing flow of oxygenated blood is essential for continued brain function. The average person will lose consciousness if the brain is deprived of blood for 10 to 12 seconds. And after three to five minutes, irreparable brain damage or death may result. The entire blood supply to the brain depends on two sets of branches from the aorta, the internal carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries. We divide blood supply to the brain into anterior circulation supplied by internal carotid arteries and posterior circulation supplied by the vertebral arteries. The internal carotid arteries are branches of the common carotid arteries. <clears throat> um, we could see the common carotid arteries here branching into the internal carotid arteries here in green and the internal carotid arteries coming up at the base of the skull here in the circle of Willis. Then the internal carotid arteries divide into the anterior cerebral arteries in light green and the middle cerebral arteries in this aqua green. The two anterior cerebral arteries are joined together by this anterior communicating artery. The vertebral arteries shown here in purple are branches of the subclavian arteries. They ascend through the transverse foramina of cervical vertebrae C6 to C1 and then enter the foramen magnum where they join on the ventral surface of the brainstem at the level of the pons to form the basilar artery, shown here also in purple. The basilar artery then bifurcates at the base of the brain to form the right and left posterior cerebral arteries. Then the posterior cerebral arteries complete the circle of Willis by joining the anterior circulation via the posterior communicating arteries. So in summary, anterior circulation is supplied by the internal carotid arteries which divide into anterior and middle cerebral arteries and the anterior cerebral arteries are connected via the anterior communicating artery. Posterior circulation is supplied by the vertebral arteries. These merge into the basilar artery and then the basilar artery bifurcates into the right and left posterior cerebral arteries, which give off a posterior communicating artery to connect the posterior circulation with the anterior circulation. Here on the left, Dr. Frank Netter is showing us an anterior view of the arteries of the brain with the frontal lobes retracted laterally. This opens up the longitudinal fissure to reveal the course of the anterior cerebral artery over the corpus callosum. We also see how the ACA's branches supply the medial portions of the frontal and parietal lobes. The anterior temporal lobe is also retracted, opening up this sylvian fissure so we could see the course of the middle cerebral artery. Lastly, we could see the vertebral basilar system, starting with the vertebral arteries on the ventral aspect of the brainstem, leading up to the basilar, basilar artery at the level of the pons, and finally the bifurcation to make the two posterior cerebral arteries in the circle of Willis. The illustration on the right is a coronal section showing the middle cerebral artery coursing through the sylvian fissure. And this is a good view of the lenticulostriate arteries branching off the M1 segment to supply some of these deeper structures. On the left here, we have a lateral view of the brain, again with the temporal lobe retracted opening up the sylvian fissure to show the course of the middle cerebral artery. On the right, we have a mid-sagittal view of the brain, which shows the course of the anterior cerebral artery supplying the medial portions of the frontal and parietal lobes, as well as a view of the posterior cerebral artery where we, where we could see its coverage of the inferior temporal lobe as well as the occipital lobe. Each of the major arteries and their branches supply certain areas of the brain known as their territories. In light green, we can see 
<clears throat> the anterior cerebral arteries, which supply most midline portions of the frontal lobes and superior medial parietal lobes. Next are the middle cerebral arteries, which are shown in this darker green. And these supply most of the lateral surface of the hemisphere, except for the superior portion of the parietal lobe, which we, also, which we already said was supplied by the ACA, and the inferior portion of the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe, which are supplied by the posterior cerebral artery, which is shown in purple. On the right, we have a coronal section of the brain, which helps us understand the cortical homunculus, which is Latin for little man. It is a topographic representation of motor and sensory areas in the cerebral cortex, like a map of our body in the brain. The neurons in the motor and somatosensory cortices aren't just randomly distributed in the brain, they're grouped by body part. Applying knowledge of arterial territories to the homunculus map allows providers to localize patients' deficits to the specific artery involved in a stroke. Beyond the homunculus, neuroscientists have identified other areas in the cerebral cortex that correspond with specific functions, such as Broca's speech area, said to be important in motor speech, frontal eye fields, which helps keep our eyes straight, and Wernicke's area, which is important in comprehension of language. We will revisit this diagram later. This, this slide shows slices of a CT scan of the head with color representation of each major artery. In blue is the anterior cerebral artery, orange is the middle cerebral artery, and green is the posterior cerebral artery. And that's it for part one on blood supply and vascular territories. Here are my references for parts one through four. The next video will cover anterior circulation strokes.